Boa chance de paz e mais. Please join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome everybody to our meeting tonight. Glad to have you here. Formally call this meeting, uh, this regular meeting of the Harlingen City Commission to order. And uh, at this time, I ask uh, for citizen communication. I think we have two who have signed yes. up. We have Ron Lozano. Okay. Mr. Lozano. Right now, I have a lateral one later on. Go ahead. As we've just heard, it's uh, better not to beguile. So, in the consent agenda, there's a reiteration that participatory democracy is more better fulfilled having an election in November. And, and I think by the mayor's own math, we, we found out that there could be instances where that would occur until 19, or, or until 2040. But there's another basis, and that is also mentioned that by allowing the county to oversee these new Republican initiatives to diminish the vote, uh, I'm not going to suggest that the mayor wants to do that just yet, but we're going to be better off having Remy oversee these elections when these auditing uh, comes up very quickly. And I'll, I'll reserve for the other item. Well, you're going to have to do it. If you signed up for the consent agenda, you need to do it now. No, no I, I put that, and there's a zoning issue coming up. Uh, item four. And as you all know, under, fifth, under the rule cited, 551.07. All right, okay. Uh, it says you can oh, talk oh. at... The zoning, the zoning variance? Right. Is that the one? Okay. Uh, and, okay, so Mr. Aguilar, is Mr. he Aguilar? here? Mr. He's Israel not. Aguilar? No, he's not Okay, present. so we'll I'm call him. Give him a call. Mr. Aguilar, this is Mayor with the City of Harlingen. You signed up for the public comment? Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the clock. You have two minutes to address the Commission. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much and good evening, um, City of Harlingen Commission and Mayor. I was just wanting to speak a little bit about uh, on the presentation today uh, on the Humane Society and the how important it is the work that they do in the community. I think there uh, has been a little bit of confusion between the services that that they are providing and uh, roles that um, animal control uh, has. And so um, I'm very glad to be able to hear the presentation and I'm glad to see that uh, we are glad to know that the city is supporting the work that they do. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. We don't have any. All right, that concludes our citizen communication. Uh, so item one uh, are recognitions and presentations. And the first one is a recognition to the Harlingen High School South Hawks football team. So if we could ask uh, the team and their coaches uh, and uh, parents if they'd like to come on up here and join me. And uh, Commissioner Pettis, if he wants to join me as well. <laughs> I want to turn sideways to the public. 
All right, well, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry you're not in this class because I think I, I, could, have, I could have arrived. If, if, if I was going to ask you if you thought he was a good teacher. And if, I said, if it's a yes, I think it's five extra points on the filing exam. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what's going to happen on that one. So uh, this, is a, this is such a great uh, recognition. I'm so pleased to be able to stand here with the commission and, uh, and the public and recognize this outstanding group of young men uh, who uh, had an undefeated regular season. I mean, how often does that happen? Not, not very often. So we want to recognize you for that, and we're going to present this plaque to you. It says, the city of Arlington congratulates the Arlington High School South Hawks football team for an incredible season. This year's Bird will win at 32-6A undefeated district champions. 2021-2022 athletes uh, Xander uh, Casadas, Marcos Gonzalez, Jeremiah Rivera, Levi Entz, uh, Devin Montemayor, uh, Elias Ledesma, Jaden Galindo for their good sportsmanship, spirit, of dedication, and victorious season. And to Israel Gonzalez III, head coach, athletic coordinator, head football <coughs> coach, for your endurance to succeed underscored by your confidence in the Harlington High School South Hawks football team presented on this first day of December 2021 on behalf of myself and the entire city commission. So we congratulate you. Uh, with, uh, your community thanks you for making, it, for, uh, for making us so proud of uh, our Harlington South football team. Congratulations. The undefeated season is great and fantastic, but for me, because I'm a hawk too, I graduated from South. For me, the big thing that you guys, is, um, what you guys did this year was the bird ball. I mean, that was a long, long, long time coming. But you guys went there, and I was at the game when you guys won it. It was just like, so thank you for that. That was awesome. <laughs> Where's the rest of the team? So, oh, so you, you picked the view? Okay. Oh, the cat, okay, great, awesome. The next thing we've got on the agenda is uh, item 1B, a presentation by the Humane Society of Harlingen. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Luis Quintanilla, and I'm the executive director at the Humane Society of Harlingen. I've been there for just short of two years. So is this the controller for? Yes. The? OK, great. I apologize in advance if I'm technically challenged. So. The Humane Society of Arlington is located uh, north side of town, 1106 Murkowski Avenue. We're open seven days a week. We have an intake of approximately 4,000 animal, uh, animals uh, annually. We currently have a staff of 15, and we are the RGV's only no-kill shelter as of today. And uh, Harlingen really is leading the way. So a little bit about what no-kill is and what it isn't. So uh, no-kill as a philosophical um, uh, term, really, or philosophical principles, saving every single cat or dog um, that can be saved. So those who are not in any sort of irremediable, uh, irremediable suffering, uh, things like that, or, or in some sort of uh, 
behavior behavioral state that's not uh, rehabilitatable. So there's no set definition, but it's saving everything you can save. And a uh, typical benchmark is saving 90% of that annual intake. Currently, we sit at a save rate of about 92.8% for the year so far. Our busiest season has already passed. Hopefully, nothing uh, will surprise us. But we've held steady over 90% for uh, nearly two years now. So we're really proud of that. So, you know, in 2019, our save rate was only 49%. Uh, that jumped up uh, throughout 2020 to uh, 92%. Uh, our staff was cut in half. We had to make some difficult decisions, but we needed to adapt to the reality of COVID and the uncertainty that came along with that with our fundraising. Um, but we adapted, uh, and this chart shows our progress. So 2019, our save rate was far below 90. And 2020, uh, beginning in March, uh, we hit that benchmark, and that life-saving uh, momentum has continued to this day. So year to date, we are still at 92.86%. Our biggest challenge um, is our lack of space, uh, but that kind of goes along with the territory in South Texas. If anybody's been at our shelter, they understand that uh, uh, space is, is pretty dire. So we work out of a broom closet. I share an office with five uh, of my staff, and uh, at any given moment, anywhere from five to seven dogs. So, uh, but we make it work. And we're very proud of that. But uh, the main thing that we really want to highlight is the fact that we are not merely a dog pound. We are not merely an animal shelter. We are a community resource center. And although we only intake 4,000 animals annually, we serve almost double that amount throughout the community with our low-cost vaccination clinics that are held monthly. Uh, that number has surpassed 7,000 within the last 12 months alone. And uh, many of those vaccines uh, are not only low cost, but free. And we've also microchipped over 1,500 animals in the last 12 months as well. Um, so that does generate some revenue to keep our operations, uh, to help keep our operations sustainable. But really, that's an investment in being proactive because we know many of those animals may end up uh, at our shelter as strays. And we know that if they're vaccinated, their immune system is going to be bolstered, and they will be microchipped, which means they can be reunited with their owner much more rapidly. So it's much more involved than merely playing with uh, puppies and cats uh, all day. Uh, we do that, but uh, we do much more than that. Um, one of the really exciting partnerships that we're just so proud of is our partnership with HCISD. Uh, they have an amazing vet tech um, certification program, and um, I sit on the board of that, the advisory committee, and we're just so happy to see that next generation of animal lovers come into our shelter every single week to really make a difference. They're getting hands-on practice that they, they wouldn't get otherwise, and we're really proud to be a part of that enrichment for them. And I, I'm just in awe at their maturity. I don't get it. Uh, when I was that age, I had no idea what I was doing, and these kids are so mature and so poised, and we're just so happy to facilitate that. Um, every single month, we have uh, low-cost uh, vaccination clinics, as I mentioned, so they actually get to hands-on practice with vaccines. They get to draw the meds under the supervision of a vet and vet tech, so it's a, it's a great experience. We also have in-house spay and neuter um, that we pay for. Uh, we get relief vets and relief organizations to come down and work out of a tiny little room. Uh, less than two years ago, it used to be our euthanasia room, and uh, more than 70% of the animals were euthanized uh, less than two years ago. Now we're saving over 90% of them, and we're using that same space that was used for euthanasia now for surgeries. So it's a complete transformation. We're very proud of that. And the students get to take part in the recovery uh, process for the surgeries, and it's, it's just really exciting to be, uh, to be at that forefront. Harlingen really is leading the way. Uh, you can see at this chart right now, at uh, this table, it shows what we do uh, and for how much. So we're the only ones that check all the boxes in South Texas. Harlingen is leading the way in South Texas. In fact, our save rate was so improved over 2020, even throughout the chaos of uh, COVID and everything else that happened, that we were actually recognized on a national scale um, <laughs> by Best Friends Animal Society. They're the largest animal welfare organization in the country. They've invested hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in the RGV. And uh, we were recognized for having the highest improvement in life saving throughout the entire country. We beat out almost 4,000 other shelters, and uh, we don't even have a vet. And uh, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's a massive victory for Harlingen. So we have a lot to be uh, proud of as a city. And uh, as you can see, so that breakdown, the taxpayer contribution per animal, it breaks down to $71 per animal. Um, we, I arrive at that number by dividing uh, the annual contribution of the city by the number of animals we get uh, annually. And it actually costs $192 per animal. Uh, that's the actual cost that goes into caring for each one. We are responsible as a private organization to raise that difference. Um, 
a lot more could be unlocked if we had a greater contribution from the city. But as you can see clearly, um, we're a solid investment. Our neighbors uh, at Cameron County Animal Shelter don't check hardly any of the boxes, and they get almost the same dollar amount per animal, and they actually take in less than half of what we take in. So it's pretty exciting the fact that we can do so much um, with relatively little compared to especially Palm Valley. Uh, Palm Valley gets over $230 per animal, and they're not even no-kill. So uh, we are very excited um, at the fact that Harlingen has made a commitment uh, to really uh, serving the community in ways that it hasn't ever before, and it's, it's really exciting because it's really not about just the, the four walls of our tiny shelter. It's about so much more. I think it's incredibly appropriate that we fall under the health department because it's not just about pets, it's about, it's about public health. And I think we're uh, doing a pretty good job of, of promoting that interest. Um, every single animal that leaves our shelter, let me go back to that slide, leaves vaccinated, uh, on preventative for heartworms, and uh, dewormed uh, on flea and tick treatment. And every single animal is also uh, spayed or neutered. Uh, prior to adoption, or they are given an appointment to come back uh, to get that spay or neuter procedure within 30 days of that adoption, and it's absolutely no cost to the adopter. So um, whereas our counterparts in uh, Cameron County are, are sending out animals unvaccinated and unsterilized, we are not doing that. We are making a commitment to public health and trying to get around the problem, because that really is the root of the issue. It's, it's not so much just about bailing ourselves out every single year. Clearly, we can do that. We've been doing that. But that's only going to get us so far for so long. What we really want to address is the root of the problem. We say that Harlingen is a safe place for pets, and it is. Uh, we are a no-kill shelter. But it's like saying a, a forest fire is put out, but really it's only one tree. The surrounding trees in the valley are still ablaze, and uh, we have to absorb that um, uh, daily. We get calls from all over the valley, all over Cameron County. and. Um, they want to surrender animals to us. They have no ability to do it uh, anywhere else, or they are afraid that they're going to drop off an animal at a shelter that's a, that's a high-kill shelter, and uh, they know that Harlingen is their best bet. So that's what we are all about um, at the Humane Society of Harlingen. You know, and like I said before, one of the, the biggest challenges is space. And I've been approached by, by several um, you know, city officials, a ton of, of concerned citizens asking, what can we do about space? Would a bigger shelter help you? Would a bigger shelter help you save more lives? And the short answer is, of course, yes. Uh, we absolutely could use a bigger shelter. But what we really need is a better shelter. Our shelter, like most uh, municipal uh, facilities, was designed uh, with a different philosophy in mind. It was designed as a pound. It was catch and mostly kill. Uh, we have to adapt our life-saving uh, programs to fit a building that really wasn't designed for that. And, uh, you know, we could use some more kennels. That's true. That would be great. But really what I'm most excited about is the opportunity to at least someday, hopefully in the near future, is to provide more of an educationally focused facility for those students that are, that are really representing uh, uh, the solution to all of our problems here in the Valley as far as the op overpopulation of stray pets goes. You know, that's, that's something that we're really um, happy to be a part of, and I hope that we can grow that. In fact, this past summer, we met with uh, Senator Lucio and uh, Dr. John August. Um, he's the dean of uh, the School of Public Health over at uh, Texas A&M, and uh, we're looking at hopefully potentially partnering in the future. It's a ton of interest from a ton of different uh, stakeholders in education, in public health, and just our pet owners that all coalesce for, for this really good, really nonpartisan uh, work. So, yeah, that's, that's a little bit about what we do. Mayor, if I could just provide a recap on what the city provides to the shelter. We do give them $287,000 a year for their operations. We also own the facility that they're in, so we maintain that. And then we provide $12,000 for the electricity, because we pay for that also, and $5,700 for, uh, for the use of water. So all told, the uh, cash contribution to the shelter is about $304,000 a year uh, for their operations. And our, uh, our total expenses for the year prior and projected for this year are about $800,000. Um, hey, did you happen to look at the uh, other property? We, we didn't have a chance last, last week because of the holidays, but we're going to go out there this week to look at it. That's a structure on Taft. Yes, I did drive by it, though, and it, it's, in, it's in pretty bad shape. It's going to need a lot of work. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> we're going to go look at it th this week sometime. All right. So uh, does anybody else does anybody have any questions? Just on, on a round number. Is it on? Just on a, on a 
ball figure. How much would like the facility that you're talking about that that would change the philosophy of the one we currently have on just on the ballpark figure? How much would that cost, give or take? Ballpark. We met with an uh, architect maybe about six months ago. Yeah, used to serve on our board. Uh, we came at a figure of about four point five to five million dollars, and it would, it's basically going to be a, a clinic with some shelter cladding around it. We want this to be a, a, a venue for relief vets to come in, uh, as we do already. We've, we've already performed over. We've already hosted surgeries. Um, in excess of 4,000 uh, cats and dogs just in the last 12 months. And uh, we could just, we want to maximize that. We want to improve that because that's really the solution. Um, that's really the root of that, that problem of overpopulation. It's lack of access to veterinary care. And uh, I don't want more kennels. I want more surgery space uh, and uh, more funding to get those vets down. We get them once a month, um, but I'd like to increase that. But uh, that's really what the, the solution is, is, is more increased access to vets. Because for the 2 million people in the valley, approximately, there's only maybe 20 to 25 clinics, only two of which are low cost. So the, the need is dire. There's over 150,000 stray pets roaming the streets of the valley every year. And other than a facility, what, how else could this um, help you? So other than a facility, um, increased funding would go directly to surgeries. 100%. I, could, I have a list of, of relief veterinarians who are ready and willing to come down and work. It just costs a, a significant amount of money. Two weekends uh, alone, if we do a really mass um, spay-neuter um, marathon, approximately 500, it's going to come out to about maybe uh, 15000 per weekend. So it's quite a bit of cost. But that's, that's the need. That's the demand. In fact, uh, about three months ago, we opened it up to the public. We've been just doing all of our uh, adopted pets to make sure that we're holding up to our responsibilities. But uh, we did open it up because we had some extra surgery spots. We had about 150 spots, and all of those spots uh, vanished within about 30 minutes. People flooded the shelter signing up for it. So the demand is great, and that's what we, we need. We need increased access to vet care, and we can, we can be that leader. And we already are. We already are the leader in the Valley. And I just want to continue that. Okay. Any any other any other questions? You said just four, go ahead. You said four four point five to five million for a new facility. Yes, sir. Okay. And other besides the facility and the increased funding, is there any other way we can help you? Unless any of you all are vets uh, and want a job, uh, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, there's, I mean, so obviously spreading the word, right? There are, there are a ton of ways, right? There there are a few ordinances that are, you know, maybe a little bit. I think they, they need some revision, or at least to be looked at again. Uh, by mine's greater than my own. I can offer the expertise from the ground and, and work from there. But uh, w clearly, we've worked around it. You know, there are some outdated um, pieces of legislation on the books. There's a pit bull ban. It makes no sense. Um, it's not based on any science. Um, if, a, if a pit bull is found running at large, not having caused any damage to property or person, it's still um, um, mandated to be put down. Um, you know, it's that's a crazy uh, ordinance. Um, okay. Well, it's a it's a fantastic partnership and yeah. uh, between the city and the Humane Society. I don't think uh, I don't think either one of us could do it as well without the other. And so Absolutely. it works. Uh, it, it works uh, as you pointed out the the best uh, the be best operation in the valley. And uh, you're to be congratulated for your leadership. Your board has been congratulated for their leadership. They've done a phenomenal job, and they have, uh, as you pointed out, uh, really dramatically uh, changed uh, how you operate and the success rate that you all have had over the last few years. And it's just uh, fantastic to hear the recognition that you received nationally uh, because you deserve it, and uh, we're, we're very uh, very proud of this uh, of this partnership, and uh, you you all do a fantastic job operating this um, operating this service for the community. And so, thank you, and thank you for doing it. It's uh, I, I, we know that it's not easy, and uh, it's a twenty four seven, and you're always uh, making having to make this uh, work and and continue to raise money because we only we don't supply even. Uh, but just just under half of your overall operational budget, so uh, we you uh, that that takes a lot of work to raise the rest of that money. So congratulations. Well, thank you, and it, it's really the residents of Harlingen. That's really who who has led the way here. Um, they've made that commitment, and the vast majority of that uh, that gap comes from those five dollar donations at you know at the at the counter at the local business right or local restaurant. So we're very grateful. We're very grateful to 
to, to everybody who's been a part of it because we couldn't do it on our own. For the vast majority of the last two years, there's been less than 10 of us on staff. So we're very grateful to the city of Harlingen. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your presentation tonight. Go on to item two, which is the approval of the regular minute, city commission meeting minutes of August 4th, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? If there, are, if there are none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Item 3A through C, the consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? Motion. Second. second. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those opposed? Okay. Item four is consideration of possible action to approve a variance to the subdivision ordinance to allow a 14 foot dedication of right of way along Dixieland Road as opposed to the 34 foot dedication required as per the adopted thoroughfare plan for the proposed Bothwell subdivision located at 1401 Dixieland Road, applicant Melvin and Hunt, on behalf of Rick Caballero. Mayor, City Commission, good evening. We have a proposed uh, subdivision on, on Dixieland Road. It's across the street from the, from the high school, uh, across the street from the racetrack, to be more specifically. So there's a vacant property. Well, it has an, a house, an old house. Uh, the new owner wants to demolish the old house and build a small uh, commercial plaza in the property. So he's going to be going through the subdivision process, but uh, he's requesting a variance to the right-of-way dedication to allow a 14-foot dedication as opposed to the 34 feet required by the Torfer plan. The 14 feet will be this line here, and then the 34 feet is this line here. The variance is in line, the variance request is in line with previous uh, variances that have been granted. Uh, to go back, this line reflects a 40 feet of, 40 feet of right away from the center of the road. Uh, which is in line with other variances that have been granted in the past. All the subdivisions, which are also in Dixie Line, kind of like in the mall area, they all got variances in the past where they all have uh, 40 feet of right away from the center of the road. So this variance request can, is in line. Can you go back to the previous slide that shows the overhead or the overview? That one? Yes. So uh, the variance that you're requesting, is it in line with the either the trailer park or the businesses that are uh, south of that? No, uh, because this area is already developed. So the, the right away line is like here, and then it will be 14 feet like there, and then go back. So, okay, I'm sorry, say that again? This, this area to the, to the south and to the right. north. So, is, so is the daycare that's there, I think that's a daycare, correct? Uh, yes. On the bottom. Are they at the 40 feet or are they at the No, they're less, they're less because it's, a, it's an, old, an older development, and that's why it's, I think it's like 30 feet from the, so 30 from feet. the center. Oh, yeah. 30 feet, right? And then, and then the uh, the trailer park. I think it's also 30 feet from 30 the center. Feet. Yeah. So you, if I'm, I'm just want to make sure I understand it, you want to bring this development even further to the street, or no. allow them to build further to the street? Yeah. This, if the proposal is to allow a dedication of 14 feet, which is in line with the other subdivisions by, by the by the mall, as opposed to the 34 feet. Uh, that is required by the ordinance. So wouldn't wouldn't that wouldn't that uh, create a traffic problem when they're, when they're trying to exit out of, and, and Dixon is a very busy street? Doesn't that doesn't that create a, a when they're coming out, whether it's the daycare or the uh, adult uh, retirement community, uh, and they're being obstructed because of the uh, these the site? I do not believe so. The site plan after the subdivision process goes through and is recorded. Then the, there's a, a building permit application for the uh, commercial plaza, and that's when the engineering department uh, reviews uh, the permit for, for traffic hazards. So they, you know, the engineering department will not approve the permit unless they, they meet the safety uh, requirements for entering and exits. So they have distance requirements from other ent entrances, and the engineering is really good about checking so, for that. Okay, so you st I need to have one more question. So you stated earlier that there's other been variances the same Correct. at 14 feet no to to allow the 40 the 40 feet from the center of the road all of these subdivisions by by the mall area 
they were they grant they were granted variances to be allowed 40 feet from the center of the road. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this variance request is in line, is in line with those variances. It, the, the 14 feet will be 40 feet from the center of the road. It'd be four, is it 14 feet? Or Four, the 14 feet dedication, which is which is this. 14. Will, will be in will be 40 feet from the center of the road, 40. So it's in line with the other subdivisions okay. uh, along in the mall area. So it's consistent. The variances request is consistent with other variances. Uh, granted in the past by previous city commissions for developments along Dixieland Road. So we're still getting dedication of right away, but not not the 34 feet required by the ordinance. Uh, you know, if the if it's if the variance is not granted, a lot of the property gets lost to the dedication of right away, and so the. The property owner is, is stating that development will not be feasible so, because so, so much it, land will be lost to the dedication of right So if the ordinance continues to have to be overwritten, why is the ordinance in place? Yes, and that's something that we, I, uh, we discussed with the Planning and Zoning Commission. I because, think that because, the, because yes. a couple of years ago you said you were going through all the ordinances. Correct. And all the requirements. And we only modified one. Correct. Right? So did we... Did, did we not look at Dixieland or? Yeah, I think that's a roadway that we need to look at. No, no, because no, no that was my yeah. question was, did you look at that? Because you said you were, re you were reviewing all the ordinances, right? You were doing yeah. a study of all the ordinances. Yes, but not. Change, change, because of the same problem, right? Yeah. The same problem, that, that if, if over and over again, it has to come to the, to the commission to get overruled. Yes. You know, then why is it in place, right? Yeah, I think the Torfer plan, there was a study done a few years ago by a consulting firm. Um, so I think we may we may be uh, good to reevaluate the Torfer plan uh, to do a comprehensive study because, in my opinion, the destination for Dix Dixieland Road is too much. It's too much. Because if, if that plan was, I would say, because I grew up in that area, Dixieland Road used to be a two-lane street. Well, right, and now it's a huge. It's it's the same designation as Ed Carey. I mean, why well, no? But, but it, what, I, what yeah. I'm saying is that the growth of it. Yeah. Has, has, I mean, it's, it's, it's just booming. When, once the mall came out there, and the, it was a little store, and then the mall, and all that, and, and, and there, used to, there used to be a, a, a movie theater, right? A yeah. driving movie theater in the corner where Pep Boys had. Uh, but it was just a small little street. So, again, it, 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 we're trying to enforce a, a rule that's, you know, 40 years old, you know. But uh, that's something I can work on with the Planning and Zoning Commission to do a tour plan study for the whole city. That's something that I can work yeah. on. And I think we can do that in-house, Commissioner. We won't have yes. to hire a consultant for that. Right. Yes. We can do that in-house. Okay. Yes. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the variance. Thank you. Wait a minute. I think there's some people who want to speak on the topic, including me. Okay. Public comment. You, you signed up for public comment to speak on this, so go ahead and speak now. You have two minutes starting now. All right. Thank you. I don't think he's going to, Javier's going to contend that he's an engineer, right? No. But there's a Harlingen City engineer. What does he suggest occur here? He recommended approval of the as presented. In the packet that was handed out to the commissioners, doesn't he suggest that it should be a minimum of 20 feet? No, it's, it's 40 feet from the center. Of no, no, no. Vigstall, to be precise. You know who Andy Vigstall is? Didn't he suggest, as Harlingen City engineer, that it go to 20 feet? All right. You need to please address the city That's commission fine. and not the state. Well, I mean, all this is... It, it, well, have you ever looked at the packet that you all get and the, it, it take, the world as a whole time. get? It's amazing that the city engineer dissents from, well, you heard him for yourself, the sherry picking that he suggests but you hired a city engineer for a purpose. There's a school right across the street, directly across the street. And as the invocation states, kids are important. They don't vote like the consent agenda, but they're important. Kids are important. Okay. All right. Is there, is there any discussion? All right. Hearing that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Item five, consideration possible action to authorize the purchase of the Skier Ford F-550 
Type 5 brush unit from Sid and Smart and Emergency Group LLC for $195,225 through the by board. Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, we come before you respectfully requesting authorization and approval for the purchase of a brush truck from Siddons Martin Emergency Group through HGAC by board for the purchase price of $195,225. The funding will be coming from the CDBG grant as approved in the meeting of July 21st uh, of this year. Staff recommends approval. Motion to oh. <clears throat> Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item six. Thank Consideration you. Consideration of possible action. Thank you, Chief. Consideration of possible action to approve the installation of street bumps on the following streets Kingbird Drive between Viroli Lane and Red Oaks Avenue, Traxler Way between Bass Boulevard and the Irrigation Ditch, and El Cielo Lindo Court between Wilson and the cul de sac. Mayor, uh, the city engineer looked at these streets and they qualify for speed bumps. The ordinance requires two commissioners to put them on the agenda for approval. Uh, once we do that, and if it's approved, we'll go to the final stage, which is uh, traffic counts. Uh, if they meet the minimum counts, then we'll install the, the, the street humps after that. So staff recommends approval. Motion for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item seven, board appointments. Ma'am, none. Okay, board appointments, board appointments, board appointments. No board appointments. Item eight, executive closed okay. session regarding the following items. Pursuant to sec uh, Texas Government Code section 551.0871 to discuss and deliberate regarding commercial and or financial information that the city of Arlington has received from a business prospect that the governmental body seeks to have locate or stay or expand in or near the city of Harlingen and with which the city is conducting economic uh, development negotiations related to project cube B uh, an incentive or with a business prospect described by section one and C consultation with legal counsel pursuant to Texas government code section 551.071 to receive privileged attorney client communications on a confidential matter. Is there a motion to go into executive session? All those in favor say aye. 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 Suppose, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into executive session, meet with our uh, lawyer, and uh, deliberate some items. There may be action on items 9, 10, 11 when we return. Thank you. Okay, we are out of executive session at 641. And we're going to go to item nine, consideration of possible action to approve item 8A, Project Cube, as discussed in executive session. Is there a motion? Motion. To, appro to approve the, uh, the direction to staff as discussed in executive I'll, session? I'll make a motion then to uh, address to the staff the negotiations with Project Cube and then keep us informed. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. And we're going to pass item 10. There's no action to be taken. And pass item 11. No action to be taken. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our meeting, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.